Bueno, muy buenos días para todas y para todos los que nos están acompañando en esta actividad del día de hoy. Eh, la Alianza Cooperativa Internacional quiere eh, iniciar nuestra actividad haciendo pues, un recordatorio de lo que han significado estos 16 días de activismo contra la violencia de género como una campaña internacional que se realiza cada año en conmemoración del 25 de noviembre, Día Internacional de la Eliminación de la Violencia contra la Mujer, y dura hasta el 10 de diciembre, o sea, mañana, Día de los Derechos Humanos. El tema global de esta campaña eh, en este año ha sido Pinta el Mundo de Naranja, Pongamos Fin a la Violencia contra las Mujeres Ahora. Según las últimas estimaciones, eh, casi una de cada tres mujeres de 15 años o más en todo el mundo ha sido objeto de violencia física o sexual por parte de una pareja íntima no, eh, o, o no pareja o de ambos. Al menos una vez en su vida, lo que indica en los niveles de la violencia contra las mujeres a nivel mundial se ha mantenido prácticamente sin cambios eh, durante la última década. Estos números no reflejan el impacto de la pandemia del COVID-19 y serían aún mayores si se incluyeran el continuo comple y complejo actos de violencia que afectan a las mujeres y a las niñas, incluidos el acoso sexual, la violencia en los contextos digitales, las prácticas nocivas y de explotación sexual, el COVID-19 que ha exacerbado todos los factores de riesgo de la violencia contra las mujeres, incluidos el, el desempleo y la pobreza, y se han reforzado muchas de las causas fundamentales como los estereotipos de género y las normas sociales nocivas. Se ha estimado que es posible que 11 millones de niñas no regresen a la escuela debido al COVID-19, lo que aumenta el riesgo de matrimonio infantil. Se espera que las consecuencias económicas empujen a 47 millones de mujeres en el mundo, de mujeres y de niñas, a la pobreza extrema en este año 2021, eh, cua, revirtiendo cuatro décadas de progreso, y perpetu, eh, de progreso perpetuo, perpetuado en las desigualdades estructurales que refuerzan eh, las víctimas de violencia de género contra las mujeres. Además del impacto del COVID-19, el contexto global de los conflictos violentos y las crisis humanitarias, incluidos los desastres relacionados con el clima, están afectando a más personas que nunca con un impacto desproporcionado en mujeres y niñas, perpetuando todas las formas de víctimas eh, contra, de violencia contra las mujeres y las niñas. La pandemia mundial demostró que el mundo no estaba preparado para responder a la rápida escalada de todas las formas de violencia contra las mujeres. Y si queremos asegurarnos de que ninguna mujer o niña se quede atrás, necesitamos enfoques integrales e inclusivos que puedan adaptarse a contextos que cambian rápidamente, previniendo y respondiendo a todas las formas de víctimas de violencia de género contra las mujeres. Las mujeres más marginadas, incluidas las mujeres con discapacidad, las refugiadas o las mujeres indígenas, entre otras, corren un riesgo desproporcionado y enfrentan mayores barreras para acceder a los servicios y a la justicia. Este panel tiene como objetivo principal movilizar el movimiento cooperativo para que se una a un llamado global a la acción contra las violencias de género. Para lograrlo y a través de la experiencia y el conocimiento de las panelistas, el webinar se centrará en varios objetivos. El primero es ampliar las historias de éxito que demuestran que las víctimas de violencias de género se pueden prevenir, se pueden prevenir todas esas violencias eh, mediante la presentación de estrategias e intervenciones efectivas para inspirar a todos los actores a escalar a, y a abogar por estrategias 
programas y recursos inclusivos, integrales y de largo plazo para prevenir las eh, violencias de género en espacios públicos y privados y dando prioridad a las mujeres y a las niñas más marginadas. Otro objetivo es promover el liderazgo de mujeres y niñas y mejorar su participación y papel en la formulación de políticas y toma de decisiones a nivel global y local. Y un otro objetivo es fortalecer el reconocimiento y la experiencia de los miembros del movimiento cooperativo en relación con eh, la prevención de violencia eh, de género. Tenemos eh, una estructura en nuestro trabajo desde el día de hoy en nuestro seminario eh, que consiste en dos partes. Una primera parte, vamos a tener las intervenciones de diferentes actores. Vamos a tener dos oradoras que nos compartirán, eh, compartirán a los y las participantes lo que sus organizaciones hacen o podrían hacer para promover estrategias y programas y recursos exclusivos, integrales y de largo plazo para prevenir y eliminar las violencias contra las mujeres. En este, en este primer panel vamos a tener a Rima Navati, que lidera la Asociación de Mujeres Autónomas CIWA, actividades de desarrollo económico y rural a 17 millones de mujeres y sus familias en toda India. Desde 1989 ha sido pionera en la reactivación, reestructuración, restauración e innovación de los medios de vida rurales, tanto en los distritos como a nivel global. Lima está siendo reconocida en toda India y en los países vecinos como ejemplo de hacer que los medios de vida de las mujeres pobres lleguen a los mercados que ellas se merecen. Y Mariaki eh, Koning trabaja como asesora en políticas de igualdad dentro del Departamento de Igualdad de la Confederación Sindical Internacional. Es experta en cuestiones de igualdad de género y trabajo doméstico. En esta primera parte, entonces, vamos a escuchar a Rima, quien nos va a acompañar y nos va a mostrar en primera instancia lo que ha significado esta gran experiencia de sí. Quiero darle la palabra entonces a Rima, quien tiene entre 5 o 7 minutos para hacer una pequeña presentación y que sigamos dialogando. Gracias. Rima tiene la palabra. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Maria. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate ICA's um, Gender Equality Committee for this continuous effort on creating awareness on uh, violence against women. Um, and also giving me the opportunity to bring the voices of 1.9 million women workers from the informal economy of our country. Uh, we are a national trade union and um, we work across the country. Our goals are full employment and self-reliance of our members. By full employment, we mean work and income security. Uh, food security and support services, which is healthcare, childcare, nutrition, and shelter. In our experience working with these poor women workers, even those from the conflict and war torn states in India, as well as in the neighboring countries of Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, and Myanmar, uh, we have learned that poverty is the worst form of violence and also one of the major causes for exacerbating the issues and challenges in the context of gender-based violence for women. Uh, a recent study that SEVA conducted showed that pervasive patriarchal institutions, uh, norms and practices, economic constraints, cultural and social norms often translate into increased instances of gender-based violence and discrimination. Organizing therefore plays a very significant role in um, enabling the women workers overcome this. Uh, we at SEVA come together as poor as women and as workers, no matter what caste, community or religion, which is so very dominant in our country, we belong to. Our approach of organizing women is to enable their economic um, security, generating livelihood opportunities, 
um, build their collective strength and also their agency and decision making power within their families, society and community, thereby making women active stakeholders in the process of peace building. At SEVA, we have seen manifestations of violence against women. Some take on gun and shoot at women or from girlhood to motherhood. Uh, when a woman is denied food is also violence. When the state fails to provide social protection to the uh, workers in the informal sector is also a form of violence. Uh, when women uh, workers are, uh, do not have access to energy and so she dies of indoor air pollution while cooking or has to walk miles to collect fuel wood or water. Um, this lack of access is also violence for the women workers in the informal sector. Let me quickly in a minute give you an example of a vendor who for three generations has been vending in the city market. Um, one afternoon when she went to get a cup of tea, her three month old daughter who was sleeping in the cloth cradle under her little cart, the police and the municipal authorities raided the market, threw away all her vegetables and put the cart in the van. Manjula Ben was shouting and crying for her baby under the cart. The more she shouted, the more the police started beating her, not listening why she was shouting and crying. Hearing this, when the Seva organizer reached, she helped her file a complaint against the police authorities and the state authorities. Not only lodge, but get it filed. Manjula Ben was organized and therefore she had the courage. She knew that she was not alone but there are thousands of women like her. Or for that matter, a woman, a daughter of, um, you know, 10 children in Kashmir, when she went out to collect fuel wood in the hills in uh, Kupwara, there was sudden firing and therefore she had to hide herself for hours. And when she reached home, her husband beat her and threw her out of the house. And now she was left to look after 10 young children by herself. Uh, but today she is now running her own enterprise and earns 5,000 rupees. These examples show that women sometimes face multiple violence at home, by the society and by the state. The domestic violence is central but a woman is surrounded by scores of other forms of violence. Uh, and how does the women are, uh, workers are able to overcome these violence, oppression, not only for themselves, but thousands of young girls and women like them. And this is by their collective organized strength and having economic security. They are no longer dependent on the men in their family for survival. They no longer have to worry whether they'll have work and income to stand on their own feet, confront and even then are able to take care of their children. Uh, once organized, these women workers are able to tap into their collective strength and know that they are not alone. Once organized, they are able to take out small loans, build their businesses, improve infrastructure, create markets, gain access to healthcare and education. They take on any challenge life brings to them. In short, they are able to move out of poverty. It is this joint action of union and cooperatives that um, SEVA has been able to bring about success in overcoming violence by the women workers. Our experience has shown that organizing is the key. We are poor women workers, but we are so many. And therefore, to, together, we are able to, um, you know, come together, fight for the rights and entitlements, and be equal participants in the econo e economy bring social economic transformations in the lives and livelihoods of the women workers and their future generation daughters. Thank you so much.
Muchas gracias, Rima, por tu intervención. Quiero darle entonces ahora la palabra a eh, Marieke Koning, quien trabaja como asesora en políticas de igualdad dentro del Departamento de Igualdad de la Confederación Sindical Internacional. Ella es experta en cuestiones de igualdad de género y trabajo doméstico. Y queremos eh, que ella tome la palabra y nos muestre su experiencia. Bienvenida, María. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Maria, for your uh, kind introduction. And um, yeah, as you mentioned, I work for the ITUC and we represent 200 million workers across the world and 80 million of these workers are women and they work in the formal and informal economy, public or private sector or in urban and rural areas. And um, we work in many areas to advance women's economic independence. So from their rights at work and opportunities to access paid and decent work, um, and particularly by aiming at transformational and gender responsive uh, changes in our economy and society. So around care, uh, social protection, uh, a gender responsive just transition as part of the climate uh, emergency agenda, but also we're looking at transformational ways um, in our leadership from the global to the local level. Um, so I would like to further focus my um, presentation on what we do um, in the area on the elimination of uh, gender-based violence in the world of work. And it were actually the women in our trade union movement rising over a decades ago, taking leadership by organizing, campaigning and lobbying for an international treaty aimed at the elimination of violence and harassment, gender-based violence and harassment in the world of work, often in alliance with a whole range of civil society organizations. History was made in June 2019 when ILO Convention 190 and Recommendation 206 were adopted at the ILO conference. The only tripartite UN body where governments, employers and workers discuss, negotiate and adopt international labor standards amongst others. The ILO instruments um, which were adopted are very comprehensive instruments. So they cover all workers and they cover workers in all their diversity and in all sectors from the formal to the informal economy. It contains strong provisions to prevent, address, and eliminate gender-based violence in the world of work, including mitigating the impacts of uh, domestic violence in the world of work, as we have seen during the, uh, and still are seeing during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, women were deeply impacted by, because of a surge in domestic violence and violence and harassment at work, especially for essential workers, including domestic workers. And this underscores the uh, fundamental importance of um, the ILO Convention 190 and Recommendation 206. So since the adoption, the ITUC is running um, the so-called Ratify C190 campaign. Um, and we now have over in over 60 countries lobby and advocacy campaigns in place from Nepal to Argentina, South Africa to Italy, Morocco to Bangladesh. Um, and in support of all the work being done across the world, we provide uh, campaign tools, a guide written in accessible languages in and available in multiple languages. And we are also mobilizing on key dates, like now during the 16 days of action. We're running capacity building workshops and provide regular news and updates from what unions and allies do across the world in newsletters on our webpage, uh, campaign webpage and Facebook page. And I will share those resources uh, after my presentation. So today um, we celebrate the 10th um, official ratification of C-190. South Africa has just um, completed its ratification process. So now we have 10 countries who have ratified this convention so far. So they followed the footsteps of um, Argentina, Uruguay, e Ecuador, Fiji, Greece, Italy, Mauritius, Namibia, and Somalia. And we are very happy that the Minister of Employment and Labour of South Africa will join us um, at the four, Fourth World Women's Conference on Tuesday, when we will discuss the next steps of the 
C-190 campaign in the lead up to the ITC Congress by the end of the next year. But this campaign is part of a, an ever-growing global movement pushing for the wide ratification of C-190, its effective implementation um, all over the world. Um, so IGUC, we're not working alone. We are working very close in collaboration with global union federations who organize and represent workers by sector. Uh, this year, we collectively published um, the so-called uh, C-190 Training of Trainers uh, Toolkit, a tool for unions and allies to carry out awareness and capacity building workshops to enhance the knowledge and about um, the ILO Convention 190, how to use these instruments to make a world of work free from gender-based violence and harassment a reality. And that is not only true ratification, we're also aiming at, um, yeah, focusing on workplaces and make sure that workplace policies and collective, collective bargaining agreements and other areas that they actually are based on the provisions of these important ILO instruments. The ILO also launched um, in June this year a big campaign around the ratification of C-190 and produced a very useful guide with examples of what government, governments are doing right now to make these instruments a reality. And there is more, the 16 days of action campaign, we are, have been working with them for over a number of years and we are campaigning together on the ratification of C-190. And um, we also work with, for instance, Human Rights Watch, with whom we have been working to strengthen national alliances um, across the world. And also uh, with Avas, we did uh, an online petition together with Human Rights Watch, um, which was uh, what, which was delivered during the UN Women Generation Equality Forum in the presence of uh, many governments who as a result publicly committed to also ratify C-190. So in the near future, we expect a whole range of ratifications. So we are working even with many more groups. I have no time to mention them, them all, but uh, we are really happy and, and, and um, uh, thankful that this is such a powerful movement. And to show this, um, we have, um, I would like to, to show a, a little video which shows and actually captures the power of women and what can be achieved when women workers rise collectively for the right to a world of work free from violence and harassment, gender-based violence and harassment. Thank you. Bueno, muchísimas gracias, eh, Mariette, por esta presentación. Tengo dos preguntas del público para, 
para, acá, para las dos. Eh, para Rima tengo una que pregunta, ¿cómo ha afectado el COVID-19 la seguridad económica, social pol y política de las mujeres en India eh, con todo este tema del COVID-19? Um, sure, COVID-19 has uh, directly uh, destroyed the livelihoods of um, the informal sector women workers. And as a result of that, it has resulted into direct reduction in the food intake of women and young girls. Almost uh, a study done by Seva showed that 63% of the women now have reduced food intake which directly affects the nutrition of the women workers. The second is, uh, uh, it has also resulted into school dropout of young girls. So our study showed that um, almost 73% um, of the girls have dropped out of school. And um, uh, compounded by this is that women have now um, been, uh, you know, subjected to more and more violence because the men who had all migrated in search of work have returned back. Some of them have still not returned. There's loss of livelihoods, anxiety of the mounting debt, uh, uncertainty of work. And as a result, women are subjected to more and more violence. So I think COVID-19 has directly destroyed the lives and livelihoods and relief packages in form of, uh, um, you know, loans do not work. They work only when economy is functioning, but when the economy is fractured, the informal sector workers are thrown out of the economy. So relief uh, in terms of loans also does not work for the informal sector workers. I hope I answered the question. Muchas gracias, Rima. Sí. Eh, hay una pregunta también para los dos y para María, que va a ser primero la, la exclusiva para María. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo las cooperativas podrían apoyar el trabajo de los sindicatos en las ratificaciones del convenio 190, que como lo has anunciado, es tan importante para prevenir todo el tema de las violencias? Yeah, that's an excellent question. And um, yeah, how you can support uh, the campaign. Um, we have many ways on how you can support a campaign. So um, I promise that I still will share some resources in the chat because these resources will also help you, um, you know, to, to share with um, those active in your movements to, to better understand, for instance, the instruments. But we also, uh, what we often do, um, is when you are based in a particular country or region, uh, just contact contact us and we can connect you with our focal points in the unions, um, regionally or uh, nationally, so that you can, uh, you know, join the alliances because there are many national alliances in place already in many countries. So um, this is what we could, what we can do concretely. Uh, besides sharing the resources and sharing uh, the focal points. But also in general, um, what is really helpful uh, in support of the campaign is um, by consistently referring to the importance of the ratification and effective implementation of C-190, um, making um, uh, and sharing key messages around that during your events or, or in social media adds really power and voice to the importance to eliminate violence and harassment and gender-based violence and harassment in the world of work. And I just would like to underpin again that also these instruments also apply to workers and women workers in the informal economy. There are a number of provisions included um, which even specifically um, uh, focus or cover workers in the informal economy. So there are many ways how you can support this. So be focal as you can. Um, also, when you are in touch with um, your officials, uh, decision makers, <coughs> talk about it. And that is also very helpful in support, but also connect with us. So whenever you think the time is ready, just contact us and we can provide you with uh, the focal points regionally or nationally. 
Muy bien, muchas gracias, Noreca. Eh, hay una pregunta para las dos, eh, muy relacionada con, la que ya, eh, han, con las que ya han respondido. Eh, ¿Cuáles serían algunos ejemplos de estrategias e intervenciones globales para prevenir y eliminar las violencias contra las mujeres, tanto en los ámbitos profesionales como privados? Sabemos de lo amplio que puede hacer, pero pedimos algunos ejemplos. May I? So hey. I think um, to give some examples of how to prevent violence against women, both at the, at the home as well as in the workplace, is first and the foremost by organizing women as workers, giving identity to women's work as work. And I think it's a joint action of unions and cooperatives in countries like ours. So in, in um, where majority of the workforce is in the informal sector. So how do you create alternative economic opportunities for the workers so that they are not vulnerable, so that you know they can have decent work and they can live a life of dignity and self-respect? When a woman is secured, economically secured, she's able to deal with all her vulnerabilities. So I think uh, at SEVA, we organize the women uh, workers into cooperatives, which uh, help them in garment making, uh, which help them in, in construction work. Women workers doing tree plantation on the uh, wasteland in forest, uh, forest regeneration. We have salt miners who are organized and then build worker owned and managed supply chains. And that is the answer. So when you have worker owned and managed supply chains, you are no longer dependent on um, the private sector or on the global supply chains. So these are some of the examples. How do you bring access to energy? How do you bring access to better health care? And that is what will help prevent uh, violence against women. Muy bien, eh, María, María Ken. Yeah. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I, I very much agree what Rima has said. Um, it's so important to uh, organize um, and um, to, to, because then you are part also of, of, of a collective voice, um, part of, um, yeah, collective power. So that's really, really important. And in addition to that, which mentioned, which Rima already mentioned, the cooperation between unions and cooperatives are very, very important too. Um, and also build upon the alliances um, across women, across different organizations and movements. I now see, for instance, in a number of countries, now it can be in, uh, like in Indonesia or Argentina or in Morocco, um, but very big alliances, national alliances emerging and women working together. And they say, we're not going to give up now to make sure that um, we have laws and policies in place uh, to eliminate gender-based violence and harassment in the world of work. But that's not all. It's also about, um, and again, I have to refer to Rima, the recognition of work as work. So um, it's also about, um, making sure that all workers also in the informal economy are recognized as workers so that they, their rights are recognized in law and in practice and that they also have uh, uh, the right to access social protection. So this is also part of a wider picture. That's why for us as ITUC, we're now pushing very hard to get the care economy agenda up in front on the agenda of governments as well because care is... Um, um, is very important to, to, to address in our economies. Um, we all know what the impacts are of women taking up the, 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 the bulk of the unpaid care um, work in, uh, in the household, and that impacts their economic independence um, a lot, as well the um, importance of equip equitable access to um, quality uh, and public uh, health and care services. So it's all part as well of a wider uh, um, picture. And as we have seen with the current crisis and still are seeing the impacts of the pandemic, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, 
But as we are seeing now as well with the emerging climate emergency, that with each crisis, those who are um, working and living in poverty are always the most affected. So it's really time as well for transformational change within this context. But um, so it, it's, it's, it requires a multi-pronged approach. But um, I've seen throughout my years in the union movement that strategic alliances can accelerate and make the change happen we want to see. Muchísimas gracias a nuestras dos panelistas, a Rima Nanabati y, y a Marianne Koning por sus intervenciones. Eh, de verdad que ha sido muy enriquecedor para todos nosotros y vamos a la segunda parte de este seminario. En esta segunda parte vamos a escuchar a nuestras representantes del Comité de Equidad de Género de la Alianza Cooperativa Internacional. Y en ella vamos a tener tres panelistas muy, muy importantes, muy sabedoras de todo lo que ha significado este proceso al interior del comité y de cada una de sus regiones y cuáles son las acciones que se están adelantando en, en esta um, campaña contra la violencia de género y específicamente contra la violencia contra las mujeres. Eh, vamos a dar la palabra de manera primera a la profesora Esther Gilleró. Eh, ella es presidente del Comité de Investigación y Género de Asia África y directora del Instituto de Desarrollo Cooperativo de la Universidad Cooperativa de Kenia. Quiero darle la palabra a Esther, quien nos va a presentar todo su, eh, un, un, en cinco o siete minutos a más tardar, eh, una, un paneo de lo que significa eh, esas acciones que se vienen desarrollando eh, en Asia África. Bienvenida, Esther. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I want to thank the ICA Gender Equality Committee uh, for organizing this forum. It's a very important forum, as we had heard from the two previous speakers. Uh, just as you, have, as you have been told, I am the chair of the Gender Equality Committee for ICA Africa, uh, but I work at the Cooperative University of Kenya. And um, in terms of uh, gender, you know, gender-based violence, we have not been spared uh, in East and even Southern African region uh, because we have high rates of uh, sexual violence against women and girls. Uh, in fact, uh, when we look at uh, our seven countries, we find that around 20% of those aged between 15 and 24 years, they have reported, they have had experienced, they have experienced sexual violence from an intimate partner. And uh, sexual violence against early adolescents, uh, those are, who are aged 15 years, and below is highest in the conflict and post-conflict countries. Uh, for example, the DRC, DR Congo, Mozambique, Uganda, and Zimbabwe. Now, this high rate of violence against women and girls in the region is maintained by the persistence of harmful gender norms, alcohol use, and overall increase, uh, increased poverty and violence in the urban slum areas and conflict areas. Uh, partner violence also, and the fear of abuse to prevent girls from refusing sex and uh, jeopardize their ability to negotiate codom use. Uh, studies in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa have found out. And uh, looking at the outbreak of uh, COVID-19, since the outbreak of COVID-19, uh, emerging reports have shown that several types of violence against women and girls have intensified. Although COVID-19 pandemic is claiming the lives of many, the pandemic's disproportionate impact on women and girls' uh, socioeconomic welfare is threatening to reverse the hard-won gains in advancing 
uh, gender equality and women empowerment. Uh, this is uh, from what we have done in the past. Uh, this period of COVID-19 uh, have tended to reverse uh, everything or almost everything that we have done uh, because of the many cases that have been reported. In Africa too, there have been reports of abuse such as, such as intimate partner violence, uh, sexual harassment, uh, child marriage, uh, also female gentle mutilation, uh, domestic and uh, sexual abuse of women and girls, uh, which are exacerbated particularly at the lockdowns. Uh, in addition, with online learning, cases of online abuse, harassment, and exploitation of children have been on the increase. And uh, why is the cooperative movement important in enhancing gender equality? Uh, we look at cooperatives as the best place to address these inequalities due to the cooperative movement's values uh, that is, for example, values of self-help, equality, equity, uh, economic growth through cooperation, and democratic principles. Uh, because uh, here we can be able to bring women together and they can, through their own efforts, uh, come up with the, you know, projects and initiatives that uh, can help them uh, generate their own income and come out of this uh, scenarios that we are talking about. There is also a link between women's involvement in cooperatives and poverty reduction, uh, because as we support women and empower them, uh, we know that the households in which they live, uh, they are also empowered. And after getting involved women, uh, involved women report that they participate in more productive activities and they earn higher incomes. And uh, this enhances their decision-making at household level and involvement in community affairs. So empowering women goes a long way to even reach out to the communities. And I think through cooperatives, we should be able and we are able to do that. And then we also look at cooperatives as being very readily solutions uh, to poverty questions. Uh, already at village level, that has been happening. And uh, since these are also the same, uh, the same areas where the women live, uh, it is easy for us to fly and uh, organize them into, uh, into cooperatives. Then we, we also note that uh, getting women organized around their, work, uh, around their work empowers them not only to deal with issues around their work, but also issues around their households and society at large. So what we are saying here is that uh, any activities that we do, uh, we try to see how we can mainstream uh, gender. We do analysis and we find out the gaps that exist. And uh, through cooperatives, we can be able to sort out uh, some of these problems through women participation. Uh, and I think this would be a good step and um, then also what we also probably need to do is to see how we can involve the men in these initiatives. Uh, because most of the time you find that, uh, yes, women are trying, uh, they're trying their level best to come together and even to support their families. But as long as the men are not involved in what is happening, even at the cooperative level, they don't support the women and uh, women uh, tend to just be more and more isolated, even as they do these uh, programs and initiatives to empower uh, them, themselves. Yeah, so it has been uh, quite hard for, for our women and girls, and uh, probably we should be thinking about projects that uh, can help the women uh, come out of uh, this situation uh, by supporting them, uh, especially where they are doing some uh, projects. Yeah, I think uh, that's what I'd like to say. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Esther, por tu intervención. Enseguida haremos eh, un, 
de una vez terminada cada una de las intervenciones de nuestras panelistas, pues tendremos un foro para el tema de las preguntas. Ahora quiero dar paso a nuestra compañera Xiomara Núñez de Céspedes. Ella es vicepresidenta del Comité de Igualdad de Género de la Alianza Cooperativa Internacional, presidenta del Comité de Equidad de Género Regional de las Américas, Cooperativa de las Américas, y dirigente en su cooperativa base, la Cooperativa de Servicios Múltiples de Profesionales de Enfermería COPROEN de República Dominicana una amplia eh, trayectoria como activista en todos los temas de equidad de género. Quiero darle la palabra a Xiomara. Xiomara, tienes eh, máximo siete minutos para hacer tu presentación. Bienvenida. Gracias, Eugenia. Eh, para mí siempre es altamente importante participar en estos foros, ya que nos permite dar un panorama de lo que estamos haciendo en América. Y como tengo tan pocos minutos, no quiero eh, referirme a lo que significa la violencia ni hasta dónde llega para las mujeres y las niñas o para todos los infantes en sentido general. Y me quiero eh, solamente suscribir a decirte qué hacemos en América en favor de la violencia. Para todo es conocido que el 50 y algo por ciento de la población de las cooperativas son mujeres. Por eso las cooperativas no estamos de espalda a este flagelo que, que hace que nos sintamos vulnerables e inseguras al interior de nuestros hogares. Para nosotros, la cooperativista, es sumamente importante la participación activa en la prevención y la denuncia del maltrato contra las mujeres y las niñas. En América tenemos un amplio programa en cuanto a estas actividades. Si pueden ver en nuestra página las cosas que hacemos para mejorar la situación de las mujeres a nivel eh, de América. Hemos hecho un sinfín de actividades, no solamente en estos 16 días que marcan un llamado de atención para el resto del mundo, sino que mantenemos un programa continuo de conferencias, educación, ayuda a las mujeres vulnerables y a las mujeres en peligro al interior de sus hogares. La cooperación es un instrumento clave para frenar este flagelo, por lo menos en las comunidades donde hacemos incidencia. Desde Coproen, como tú decías, nosotros organizamos marchas, paradas cívicas, denunciando el maltrato, educando. También tenemos un amplio programa sobre eh, masculinidad sana, donde hacemos reuniones con los varones, con nuestros pares varones, donde le explicamos las consecuencias y cómo prevenir la violencia al interior de sus hogares. También tenemos ayuda psicológica para las mujeres maltratadas y hemos desarrollado una guía de atención para detectar el maltrato desde la misma emergencia de los hospitales. Hemos tratado de entrenar al personal de enfermería que está en, esta, en el área de emergencia para que puedan detectar a las mujeres maltratadas y que no se atreven a hacer las denuncias. También hay cooperativas como eh, La Vega Real, que son parte de nuestra, de nuestra afiliada aquí en República Dominicana, que desarrollan también un amplio programa de prevención y denuncia sobre el maltrato y la violencia. Yo quiero decirle a todas las cooperativistas que nos están esperando nos están escuchando, que no esperemos a que, a que otros intervengan para la prevención de la violencia. Es un flagelo que nos atañe a nosotros y desde nosotras tenemos que comenzar a dar la voz de alarma. Como siempre les digo, los comités para el desarrollo de la mujer, los comités de equidad de género en el interior de las cooperativas no son comités de sociales. No son comités para organizar banquetes y fiestas. Son comités para defender los derechos de la mujer. Son comités para educar a las mujeres. Son comités encaminados a, a hacer marcos estratégicos para que las mujeres tengan 
servicios adecuados y, y reformulados a partir de sus necesidades. Tengan un espacio donde denunciar la violencia y donde ir a referir eh, las necesidades que tengan en ese aspecto, como necesidades legales, necesidades de sustento o mejoras en su salario o servicio para salir de un estado en una situación de peligro. Entonces, los comités estamos llamados a hacer causa común con esas mujeres vulnerables, a educar a aquellos hombres que son los perpetradores de la violencia en favor de la no violencia en contra de las mujeres. Por eso organizamos charlas de masculinidad sana, por eso tenemos talleres para varones, para que puedan manejar la agresividad sin llegar en contra de las mujeres y los niños. Entonces, en América tenemos eh, ejemplos como los de Argentina, que han hecho un pacto por la no violencia, firmado por una cantidad enorme de instituciones cooperativas y sociales en favor de tener políticas al interior y al exterior de su comunidad que favorezcan el freno de la violencia en, en los hogares. Entonces, nosotros tenemos que hacer que esto que está pasando en estos 16 días sea algo que continúe el año entero. No podemos parar la denuncia, no podemos parar la capacitación, no podemos parar la educación en favor de la no violencia para nuestros padres varones, sino que tiene que ser un trabajo continuo. Yo espero que esta, estos 16 días despierten, activen eh, eh, esos movimientos para que comencemos a, a generar planes y proyectos que, que se muevan a todo lo largo del año para prevenir y más que nada para denunciar la violencia al interior de los hogares y en los lugares de trabajo, porque no se limita solamente al interior de los hogares. Tenemos violencias en las calles, tenemos violencia en, el, en los trabajos, tenemos violencia digital, en, lo, en las redes sociales, en los medios de comunicación, tenemos una revictimización cuando las noticias y los medios que comunican esta hacen que la mujer se sienta de nuevo agredida por la forma que ponen los problemas y las noticias en las que se vieron involucradas. Entonces, es algo para repensar, es algo para meditar y ponernos a planear estrategias claves que involucren no solamente a los comités de género al interior de las cooperativas, sino a toda la dirigencia cooperativa para prevenir esto. Porque, como les dije, somos más de la mitad de la población cooperativa. Y no es cierto que a pesar de nuestros principios y valores y de estar formado como cooperativista dentro de un marco de democracia, nosotros somos inmunes a lo que está pasando en el mundo. Somos parte del mundo y al interior de nuestra cooperativa también se dan los casos de violencia de género, también se dan los casos de violencia laboral y también se dan los casos de violencia eh, digital y reputacional, que es una de las violencias que muchas veces no se trata. La violencia psicológica es tan grave como la violencia física y nosotros debemos poner un alto a esa violencia a través de una capacitación continuo al interior de nuestros hogares y de nuestros lugares de trabajo. Yo creo que, que he hablado lo, lo básico para no aprovecharme del tiempo, pero sí, más adelante me gustaría mostrar algunas imágenes de las cosas que se hacen en el cooperativismo en favor de la no violencia contra la mujer. Gracias María por la invitación y gracias por ser una parte importante de nuestro comité en América que tiene eh, yo creo que va a, eh, tiene un estandarte en, en cuanto a la prevención y a la denuncia del maltrato y la violencia contra las mujeres y las niñas. Muchas gracias, Xiomara, por tu intervención, muy completa en tan pocos minutos. Ahora quiero darle la bienvenida a la señora Chitose Aray, presidenta interina del Comité de Mujeres de Asia y el Pacífico de la Alianza Cooperativa Internacional. Asia, miembro de la Junta Regional de Asia, de Asia y el Pacífico de la Asia, de, vicepresidenta de la Unión Cooperativa de Consumidores Japoneses 
JCCU y presidenta de la cooperativa Mirai, la mayor cooperativa de consumidores del Japón. En pres eh, la presentación en nombre de la señora Arai será llevada a cabo por la señorita eh, Simren Singh, coordinadora del Comité de Mujeres de Asia y el Pacífico de la, de la Asia. Bienvenida entonces a la señora Aray y a Simren en esta presentación. Thank you very much, Miss Maria, for your kind inter for your kind introduction and for inviting me to today's webinar. 4月に女性委員会委員長のナンディニアザトさんが退任されましたので、ICAAP 女性委員会の委員長代行を務めております、荒井千歳と申します。どうぞよろしくお願いいたします。I am Chitose Arai, as Dr. Nandini Azad stepped down as the chairperson of the ICA Asia Pacific Women's Committee last April. I serve as the acting Acting Chairperson of the Committee now. It is such a pleasure to, to join today's webinar. 現在女性委員会ではアジア太平洋地域の16カ国22組織から26名のメンバーが参加しております。Currently, the ICAAP Women's Committee has 26 individual members from 22 ICA member organizations in 60 countries. アジア太平洋地域はそれぞれの国にさまざまな事情がありますが、すべての女性と少女たちが命と暮らしと尊厳が保障されるよう私たちは協力していきたいと思います。The situation surrounding women differs from country to country. However, we would like to work together to ensure that all women and girls are guaranteed lives, livelihood, and human dignity. I hope that we can learn from each other to end violence against women. この後 AP 女性委員会事務局のシムリンさんより英語で活動報告をお願いいたします。それではシムリンさんよろしくお願いいたします。Since we have limited time, Ms. Simrin, the Secretary of the Committee, will make a presentation in English on behalf of myself. Ms. Simmering, would you please start? Thank you very much, Ms. Arai.、Uh, the episodes of intra and interstate conflicts、uh, and violence against women are increasing globally.、Uh, the Asia Pacific region is not devoid of these episodes. In September 2020, the IC Asian Pacific Committee on Women organized a webinar with its members to discuss the impact of COVID 19 on women cooperators. Members notably mentioned that cases of domestic violence had considerably increased during lockdowns. And due to the twin burden of domestic duties and childcare, as well as managing work from home, women acutely suffered from mental health issues. The point to note here is that it That while it takes bravery for women cooperators to admit that yes, violence exists、uh, exist in their societies and countries, because many believe it to be a matter of shame, very often solutions and ways in which violence against women cooperators are tackled or addressed are not shared in these forums. This could be for a variety of reasons, such as not having enough information on how cooperatives are supporting women and girls affected by violence in communities, or not having mechanisms and provisions in cooperatives to support women affected by violence and harassment at workplaces or in communities, and or not willing to share strategies adopted by cooperatives to support women and girls affected by violence. 
The latter, the last, seems a bit unlikely. In August 2019, our Women's Committee held a workshop on enhancing gender equality in cooperative business, where we endeavored to take stock of the status and conditions of women in cooperatives and identify the challenges faced by them at a regional level. A few significant highlights from the workshop were that systematic challenges, including discrimination and violence faced by women in cooperative businesses, are due to macro and micro issues. Macro issues prohibiting the advancement of women in the workforce include wage discrimination, unpaid labor at home and work, patriarchal mindset, and stereotype attached to gender roles. Micro issues exist at individual level and stem from a lack of self-confidence, self-worth, and a feeling of powerlessness due to, due to lack of awareness, skills, socioeconomic background, and livelihood. During this workshop, one of our members from the Philippines spoke about countering discrimination and violence in the Philippines, a country where basic literacy rate is higher among women. Women also dominate the public sector and are active in their communities. However, economic, political, and social cultural realities affect this. NATCO, one of ICA members in the Philippines, has been actively discussing inequality and discrimination against women. They are also encouraging women to be more vocal about climate change adaptation, gender and development issues, etc. They are creating opportunities for women by holding gender sensitivity trainings for cooperatives, sending them to international conferences, and encouraging them to enter management training programs. The same committee member, name kept anonymous here, represents most Holy Rosary multipurpose cooperative in the Philippines. It's a primary cooperative. And this cooperative conducted a self-defense awareness workshop for women employees on 25th June 2021 to mark the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. This activity was facilitated by local police in the Philippines. It created awareness on the rights of women and their important role in the community. The workshop empowered women with self-defense skills. Moving forward, what we need is more concrete examples like these to know as well as show what cooperatives are doing to support women and girls affected by violence. This year, on 29th November, we organized the 11th Asian Pacific Regional Women's Forum on the theme, Why Does the Cooperative Identity Matter to Women? One of the sessions was peace and nonviolence as prospective values in the statement of cooperative identity. We featured a video presentation of PTK, Women Entrepreneurs Cooperative Society from Sri Lanka, which is supported by the ILO. Currently, the, this cooperative has about 1,900 members, of which 43% are female-headed households who were ex-combatants during the intrastate war and conflict in Sri Lanka. Our members from Nepal, Myanmar, Palestine, who were part of this panel discussion, shared their views on how intra- and interstate conflict have affected women in these countries and why peace and nonviolence are an enabling context for women as well as male cooperators. For instance, our member from Palestine noted that there is a peculiarity regarding the status of Palestinian women cooperator as she suffers from double violence. On the one hand, the Israeli occupation practices violence against Palestinian women in many forms, starting with killing, arresting, targeting, and violating basic rights. And on the other hand, Palestinian women still suffer from internal societal violence based on a patriarchal culture uh, that is manifested through prevailing laws and regulations that are in force in Palestine until now. Peace contributes to the economic empowerment of women in uh, Palestine through self-confidence and the ability to continue working uh, in future. From Myanmar, it was observed that best practices and measures required to maintain peace and non-violence should be shared among cooperatives, thus highlight highlighting the need that we need more concrete examples with us so as to uh, put put forward and continue this agenda. If we may, we would like to propose a few recommendations to the ICA GEC group and the larger community of cooperators present with us, uh, present here with us. 
One, we should strive to undertake extensive research in ICA member countries at global or regional levels to find out how violence and conflict specifically impacts women cooperators, what are their needs and how they can be addressed. Once these needs are identified, we could look at jointly preparing a roadmap involving advocacy, etc. Third, we need to strongly advocate for gender and development committees in cooperatives, including cooperative apexes, so that women's issues and concerns can be taken up systematically and effectively by the cooperative management and or the board. Fourth, as cooperators, we could invoke principle seven, that is concern for community, and explore ways in which we can support women cooperative members and staff who face domestic and sexual violence every day in their households and communities. We could set up emergency hotlines, counseling cells for women, and support them with paralegal assistance if necessary, among other kinds of support and assistance. Let's not forget that overall well being of women and girls is not just limited to the walls of cooperatives, but in communities in general. We would also like to recommend that we actively promote elimination of child labor and violence against young boys and girls through the support of cooperatives and make use of advocacy and capacity building tools that already exist with us and provided by the ILO for our advantage. We hope that while we observe Orange the World campaign, we could also think of collective strategies to overcome uh, violence against women and girls, which exists in all parts of the world and in, and in aspects that often go unnoticed. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention and the opportunity for us to share our views. Muchísimas gracias a um, Aray y, y a Simren por su participación y su intervención. Bueno, quiero darle entonces también la bienvenida a Annalisa Casino quien está representando la región de Europa, copresidente de la Comisión de Igualdad y Mujeres de la Alianza Italiana. Ella nos va a presentar a través de un video eh, su intervención. Quiero darle entonces eh, paso a este video que es importante en la región de Europa. Bienvenida. Good afternoon to all of you. And uh, first of all, uh, sorry for not being online with you. I am Annalisa Casino, co-president of the Italian Cooperative Alliance for Women and Equality Commission. And uh, today I'm talking with you, representing also my colleagues, Anna Manca and uh, Alessia Stabile, respectively president and co-president of uh, the commission. The Italian Cooperative Alliance uh, Women and Equality Commission, representing over the 19% of the Italian cooperatives movement, established five years ago to promote uh, gender equality inside our organizations. Women are uh, over the 60% of workers, over the 50% of members uh, of our 39,000 cooperatives uh, associated. 31% of our cooperatives are female enterprises, in which more than 50% of members are women and they represent 22% of the total turnover. 26% of the board members and 24% of top figures are women. So a high level comparing to other types of enterprises. The fight against gender violence and stereotypes is one of our most important issues, and uh, we know well how much this has dramatically increased during the uh, uh, pandemic. Cooperatives are involved uh, in the front lines, starting from the reception and protection services, and then in the working inclusion of women victims of violence in that delicate phase of recovery and search for their autonomy. We also take into proper consideration disabled women suffering double violence, immigrant women and victim of traffic. We do not want to forget children, often victim, victims 
of direct violence or who assisted to act of violence that require special care and support as the orphans or the victims. <coughs> Our committing to facing gender-based violence is a maximum. On January 2020, the Italian Cooperative Alliance signed with the three most important uh, Italian trade unions an agreement uh, against harassment and violence in the workplaces, according to the initiative promoted by the European trade unions, improved by the ILO supporting and providing incentives for companies that make a real effort to implement positive uh, actions. On the 2 of October 2020, Cooperatives Europe released its Charter of Commitments on Gender Equality. The document, approved by the General Assembly, uh, underlines the Cooperative Europe's commitment to strengthen its activities to bridge the gender gap. The Charter is uh, also an invitation to member organizations to implement uh, the, ten, the 10 uh, commitments of uh, the Charter. And uh, this Charter was developed uh, on uh, the basis of the work of the Cooperatives Europe Gender Equality Working Group, which currently sees uh, the participation of 15 country, countries and the two uh, European sector organizations. The working group coordinated by the Women and Equality Commission of the uh, Alliance of Italian Cooperatives guarantees the voice of uh, United Cooperation on Gender Equality Issues as European leader, following themes such as the Europe 2020 strategy and the European pillar of social rights. As Stefania Marcone, Vice President of Cooperatives Europe uh, and President, President of the Gender Equality Working Group said, uh, by adopting this charter, the European cooperative movement uh, is committed to making a difference uh, for millions of women cooperators of today and tomorrow in Europe and uh, in the world. As I already said, during this uh, dramatic period, the women have always been on the front line, and we have uh, react to all of this by being resilient and creative, our distinctive traits, by giving innovative response to old and new needs. Our constant dialogue with the institution has been fundamental for us. Periodically, we are asked to hear by parliamentary committees and ministries on bills. And we are part of some national committee on gender equality in which introduce our proposal. We actually actively participate in the C20 working group on gender equality, as well as uh, at some events promoted by the um, 12, 20. Thinking about uh, all of this, we believe that is uh, necessary to start from here to think more inclusive, balanced, and aware path. Thanks to the participation of everyone, women and young people, in the first place, we must build a new social paradigm where the states. The productive market, companies, communities can interact constantly to detect priorities from the various observation points and intervene promptly with the resources and sustainable actions from the com for the common good. With this, thank you very much uh, to all of you and uh, good work. Bueno, muchísimas gracias. Sabemos que tuvimos algunos problemas en el sonido eh, del video que están ajenos a, a nuestro control. Bueno, vamos para eh, el espacio de algunas eh, preguntas que se han formulado a través del chat. Tenemos la presencia de Aray, de Sinren, de Xiomara y quiero eh, que me responda pues, brevemente eh, la, eh, 
esta, esta interrogante. Eh, se ha planteado por varios de los asistentes eh, pues, eh, una pregunta que se podría concretar así, y es, ¿qué otras medidas se podrían implementar desde el movimiento cooperativo y desde los comités de equidad de género para luchar contra la violencia de género? ¿Cómo podríamos trabajar desde las cooperativas? Eh, le doy la palabra a Xiomara y después Aray a través de Sinren responde. Bueno, para, para redondear un poquito, eh, lo, lo, que, lo más importante para nosotros sería... Eh, primero establecer un observatorio, María, al interior de nuestras cooperativas, porque para implementar cualquier tipo de medida tenemos que mirar primero hacia adentro, un observatorio para nosotros, porque a veces eh, queremos que, que se implementen muchas medidas, pero es mejor comenzar a partir de ser el ejemplo. Las cooperativas hacia su interior, ¿qué estamos haciendo? Eh, yo sé que la organización a la que tú perteneces, Comeva, hizo hacia el interior un, una reingeniería, observó cuáles son las posiciones que ocupan las mujeres, cuál es la condición de la mujer al interior de las cooperativas, cómo se están haciendo las cosas en beneficio de las cooperativas. Entonces nosotros tenemos que hacer primero un ejercicio hacia el interior, cómo estamos nosotros eh, distribuyendo la carga laboral en cuanto a género se refiere, qué estamos haciendo por mejorar las condiciones de vida de las mujeres que participan en la directiva, si están eh, pudiendo accesar a los, a los organismos donde se toman las decisiones. Ese es ejercicio hacia el interior primero. Estamos nosotros equilibrando la balanza en el nivel de, de dirección, de, en el nivel laboral, ese ejercicio debemos hacerlo. Y yo creo que los comités de género juegan un papel importante en ese sentido, promover esas políticas de apoyo, promover esas políticas de educación, de empoderamiento hacia las mujeres de nuestra cooperativa. Y luego con nuestra membresía, estamos creando productos y servicios que las mujeres necesiten, puedan pagar y puedan accesar para mejorar su calidad de vida cómo están nuestras mujeres educadas en cuanto a la prevención de la violencia contra la mujer y los infantes. Ese ejercicio al interior y luego hacia la comunidad. ¿Qué hacemos? Reunimos los varones, le damos conferencias sobre manejo de la agresividad, le damos conferencias sobre masculinidad responsable, le damos con, eh, conferencias sobre el cuidado compartido de los niños y las niñas en nuestros hogares, de las labores, de las tareas cotidianas de nuestros hogares. Entonces, ese ejercicio debemos comenzar a implementarlo. Y luego las cooperativas tienen un fondo de educación que se emplea muchísimas veces para, para todos los temas. No digo que uno sea más importante que otro. Yo digo que, digo que educación también debe hacer de ello esa parte que tiene que ver con la violencia, que tiene que ver con una armonía al interior de sus hogares y que tiene que ver más que nada con las condiciones laborales de las mujeres en las cooperativas. Muchas gracias, Xiomara, por tu respuesta. Ahora quisiera escuchar a Chitos, a Chitos Earay y a Sinren, a través de Sinren, en su respuesta a esta interrogante de acuerdo a su experiencia. Thank you very much, Madam Maria. Uh, on behalf of Ms. Arai, I take this opportunity to respond to your question. I think the foremost thing that the GEC uh, Executive Committee and our members can do and should do is to generate political will among ICA members, which are largely national and sectoral level APEX organizations, uh, mostly headed by men. So we really need to inculcate this political will uh, among them to take on board the idea of gender equality and equity in cooperatives in a very serious manner, have serious roundtable consultations with the global board and all regional boards to mainstream the idea of uh, gender inclusion and gender equality in cooperatives, have 
uh, dedicated funding, have dedicated research to come up with concrete uh, needs and uh, uh, good case practices at the regional level. For uh, we are just sectoral committees or we are just handful of women cooperators and leaders who are uh, day and night uh, driving this idea, but we need to work more in cohesion and in unison uh, and in unison. Uh, the other, uh, the third uh, suggestion that we would like to make is act on existing resolutions and stances that the GEC and GEC representatives in the region have already taken via their networks and committees. For example, in Asia Pacific, uh, in 2019, we passed a resolution for uh, reservation of women, 30 to 50 percent uh, reservation of women in cooperative leadership and in all structures of cooperatives. However, we really don't know how much of that has been implemented. So we really need to sort of work on our own resolutions and uh, declarations that we come up with and follow back, uh, follow up on them. So these are a few um, suggestions from our end. Thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias. Tengo, tengo tal vez una última pregunta, pero han llegado unas preguntas muy significativas. Eh, pues todos sabemos que, voy a tratar de sintetizarlas de esta manera. Todos sabemos que hay unas violencias específicas que se dan de acuerdo al trabajo que se está haciendo con las mujeres eh, sobre, en temas de intersección de clases sociales, de raza o de etnia. Eh, cuando hablamos de, de violencias contra las mujeres, pues es muy importante tener clasificado ese tipo de violencias. Quisiéramos eh, be, se, recibir opiniones de ustedes sobre eh, cómo se ven afectadas las mujeres de acuerdo a este tema de razas o de clases sociales y cómo podríamos buscar la manera de prevenir este tipo de violencias de, en virtud de la raza, la etnia o la clase social, desde el cooperativismo. Eh, Xiomara, si quieres. Sí, bueno, ¿qué te digo? Tú que me has acompañado en tantas, en tantas batallas. Eh, el ser mujer y añadimos el color de la piel más oscuro es el negra. Es, es doblemente eh, discriminante para algunos medios. Eh, hemos tenido que romper eh, todo tipo de paradigma y estereotipos que se, se ciernen alrededor de nosotras las mujeres con, de raza negra y sobre todo pelear en, en, en un mundo como, dice, como decimos aquí en mi país, que nos gusta mucho el béisbol, con el ampaya en contra, es como con el juez en contra, porque muchas de las situaciones que se dan eh, a una mujer que se discrimina por el sexo se agravan con un color de la piel eh, diferente, más oscuro. Aún en América o en países como el Caribe, donde hay una gran población de mujeres negras, seguimos altamente discriminadas en ese sentido. Es, es algo que hemos tenido que, que vencer, que hemos tenido que romper, pero que agrava mucho la condición para, para las mujeres. En las cooperativas, no tanto porque hemos aprendido desde la óptica del cooperativismo a ser todos iguales, pero siempre aparece una que otra persona con esa limitación en su mente y en su corazón de que el color no hace seres de segunda categoría. Para las mujeres es doblemente preocupante esa condición. Eh, le doy la palabra entonces a Chito Saray a través de Simre para que nos complementen esta respuesta si tienen alguna intervención. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Maria. And I think Ms. Yomara has uh, adequately covered this issue. Um, 
I, we remember in our last webinar uh, that we held on 8th of March, one of the representatives had mentioned how, uh, even though she was at a very senior position in an international organization, yet her Asian ethnicity was always a barrier to her progress. And I think she was very candid in publicly stating that. Uh, what we do need in even in a cooperative movement is to be candid about such uh, intersectional discrimination that women face uh, for uh, for if we start talking about it we'll slowly gradually start recognizing it i think recognition to this kind of intersectionality may be missing at some level uh, both at international and national level or local level so i think uh, we need to really start discussing this more in detail. Uh, for there is a lot in the space of international development, there is a lot of uh, work uh, and opportunities available to work on intersex intersectionalities vis-a-vis uh, -vis gender. So once cooperatives recognize that this, this thing exists, we can collectively uh, work on this and even uh, make leverage the opportunities that exist in the field of international development. Bueno, muy bien, me parece que este ha sido una, un seminario muy eh, productivo y muy nutritivo para todos nosotras los aquí asistentes. Eh, quiero dar mis conclusiones para ya dar por terminado nuestro evento. Mientras tanto, quisiera que todas fueran prendiendo y todos fueran prendiendo las cámaras con la intencionalidad de tomar un registro de lo que ha sido la asistencia a este evento y mostrarlo en el board eh, de la Alianza Cooperativa Internacional y en los diferentes medios. Entonces, eso nos ayuda. Eh, Creo que, digamos, dentro de las conclusiones está, eh, pues, primero, el que hay que mirar los ejemplos a nivel mundial de lo que significa el esfuerzo que hacen las organizaciones cooperativas y sindicales para lograr efectivamente eh, um, controvertir o, o eh, implementar acciones que vayan eh, en favor de las mujeres y buscar la mejor manera de prevenir las acciones de género eh, que implican violencia. Eh, que tenemos que hacer un trabajo conjunto con nuestros compañeros, los hombres, para poder lograr una sensibilización y concienciación de lo que significa el trabajo en favor de las mujeres, la representatividad de nosotras en los diferentes estamentos al interior de las cooperativas, las acciones positivas que podemos hacer en favor de la paz, del trabajo, de la visibilidad de las mujeres, de la salud mental y física de cada una de nosotras, de buscar la mejor manera de que al interior de nuestras organizaciones los trabajos de los comités de mujeres o de equidad de género o de igualdad de género, dependiendo de cómo los nominemos, se hagan visibles al interior de nuestras organizaciones para hacer un esfuerzo de adentro hacia afuera a través del ejemplo y lograr que efectivamente todo, todas estas acciones al interior de las cooperativas que se hacen también a través del cumplimiento de los principios y valores cooperativos se hagan una realidad en favor de las mujeres y de sus posibilidades de participación al interior de las organizaciones, asimismo a través de las acciones que buscan la salud mental, física, emocional y psicológica de las mujeres eh, para tener un entorno social más sano y en favor también de las niñas. Eh, otra conclusión que saco de todo este ejercicio es que es muy importante y tal vez lo más importante es fortalecer las acciones educativas que permitan a hombres y mujeres tener conciencia de equidad de género, que tengamos acciones afirmativas en favor de la no, no violencia contra desarrollar no solo en estos 16 días de activismo en favor de la no violencia contra las mujeres, sino que es un trabajo permanente que hay que hacer. Asimismo, que tenemos que hacer un trabajo muy mancomunado con los sindicatos, 
en los cuales se ha hecho un gran esfuerzo por visibilizar a las mujeres en el ejercicio laboral, en el empoderamiento político y social y que busquemos que todas estemos representadas de una manera eh, equitativa, igualitaria al interior de nuestras organizaciones. Bueno, quiero darle las gracias a todas las participantes, a todos los que nos han acompañado desde diferentes partes del mundo, desde todos los continentes. Hemos tenido una muy buena eh, participación y con seguridad vamos a ampliar este efecto porque el, el evento va a estar grabado y lo vamos a, a poner eh, o a colocar para visibilidad en nuestras páginas de la Alianza Cooperativa Internacional. Muchísimas gracias a todas nuestras panelistas, a Marie, Marieca, a Chitos, a eh, Simren, a Xiomara, a nuestras compañeras también, a Rene, Rima Nanabati de Sigua en India, a nuestra profesora Esther Chivo que también nos acompañó y a nuestras compañeras de Europa, a Annalisa Cancino y a Paloma Arroyo, que sé que está acompañándonos desde España también. Hemos tenido una muy buena participación. Gracias a Andrea Teodora por toda su organización desde la Secretaría Técnica y a nuestra traductora, a Marta, que nos ha acompañado en este valioso ejercicio. Esperamos seguir encontrándonos en estos eventos eh, que organiza la Alianza Cooperativa Internacional a través del Comité de Equidad de Género y que queremos seguir eh, trabajando de una manera muy común, mancomunada, aprovechando la tecnología y estos espacios que es, se han vuelto tan importantes, tan interesantes de integración para todos eh, nosotros y nosotras en la Alianza Cooperativa Internacional. Hasta otra oportunidad, que tengamos un muy buen ejercicio y sigamos todas nuestros, que sigan todos nuestros comités continentales ejerciendo y activando las acciones afirmativas en favor de las mujeres en la participación política, económica y social y en la prevención de las violencias de género contra las mujeres y las niñas. Que tengan una Gracias buena por la tarde, noche o espacio. Gracias <ríe> por la invitación, María. Gracias. Con muchísimo gusto. Muchas gracias a todas ustedes por aceptar nuestra invitación. Que tengan un, un feliz día, una feliz noche, una feliz tarde, porque estamos en diferentes partes del mundo. Gracias, gracias.